Jay, can I get a McAllen 18? You know, usually when someone wins their first trial, they at least pretend to finish the drink their fellow ADAs bought them. I'm sorry, do we? Know each other? Not yet. But today's your lucky day. Oh, why is that? Because it's the day you get to meet Donna. Let me guess, you're Donna. Oh, you have no idea how Donna I am. Well, Donna, I'm Harvey. Harvey Specter. You really think I'd be talking to you if I didn't know who you were? How exactly do you know about me? I know about everybody. What I don't know is why this is the first case you ever took to trial. Because it was a white collar crime, not some drug dealer on the corner, which makes it the kind of case. That puts your name in the paper. You're not just a pretty face, are you? No, I'm not. So maybe you should buy me a drink and we can continue this conversation in the corner. Jay? Okay, enough about me. Let's talk about you. Oh, my favorite subject. You know what I think? Mm. I think your favorite subject didn't come up to me just to find out why I went to trial. You want something. I sure do. And I think I might be ready to give it to you. It's not sex. Then never mind. <laughs> Wow, you're gonna be that honest about it. Saves time. Well, in that case, I wanna to move to your desk. And why is that? Because it's no secret that in a few years you're going back to Gordon Schmidt and Van Dyke. And let me guess, you wanna come with me when I do? No, I don't. Then why? Because I'm gonna be an actress, and I want somebody who understands that there's more to life than just the DA's office and that I can give my all to them, but still step out for the occasional audition. So you're stepping out on me already? Yes, but the important thing is, I'm telling you about it in advance. McCallum 36. I didn't order McCallum 36. It's from the gentleman over there. Okay, I don't know who that is, but I'm telling you right now, he is bad news. I know who you are, and I'm not interested. Just because I got a bad reputation? Because I'm not accepting a drink for putting your rival behind bars. You got the wrong idea, pal. I didn't buy you that for putting my enemy away. I bought you that for how you put my enemy away. Okay, you got me. What are you talking about? You. You've got something special. And I want people with something special working for me. Why exactly would I want to work for you? I can think of a million reasons, because that's the signing bonus I'm going to give you. And that's a hell of a lot more money than you're ever gonna make as a lawyer. What if I told you I don't practice law to make money? Then I'd ask you, what are you practicing for? To bend people to my will. Then bend people to your will for me. Well, here's the thing, Mr. Forsman. Not that it's any of your business, but I'll be making half a million a year in no time. Half a million a year is dick. My gardener makes that. Then go offer your gardener a job because I'm not interested. Just so you know. Change your mind and come back to me? It's not gonna be the same conversation. Thanks for the drink. Good luck, Mr. Forsman. Well, what do you think? I think this place is a dump and I'm busy, so why don't you tell me why we're here? I wanna open a restaurant here. Marcus, there's already a restaurant here, and it isn't working. Which is why they're gonna lose their lease. Take a look. I've got a chef. I've got a liquor license. I've got renovation plans. I have everything I need. Except the money. I need $150,000. Are you crazy? Come on, Harvey. This is my dream. I know I can make this work. I'm not saying you can't, but I don't have that kind of money. You're the big time lawyer who just got his name in the paper. My name in the paper doesn't pay me extra money. I make $50,000 a year. And you said you were gonna be a corporate lawyer. Yeah, and when I am, I can help you, but right now- I don't give a shit about right now. I give a shit about when you were supposed to be my big brother, but instead, what did you do? Marcus, when are you gonna take responsibility for your own shit? What the hell does it look like I'm trying to do? But if you don't come through, I'm gonna go to mom. You don't mean mom, you mean him. And you're not taking a nickel from that man. Taking his money isn't gonna make what he did to dad any worse. That's bullshit and you know it. And I'm not gonna let you do it. Hey, Harvey, how the hell are you gonna stop me? Am I crazy or is that the same dress you were wearing the last time I saw you? You must be crazy because I don't wear the same dress ever. Then you must spend a fortune on wardrobe. But I have to say, it's worth it. I suddenly get the feeling this isn't just a drop by. I want to move up our timeline. Harvey, we have a deal. 
I put myself on the line for you, and our deal is not going to change. I could just pay you the money back and move on. And if you could do that, you wouldn't be here asking to come back. How much money did Marcus lose this time? He didn't lose anything. He wants to start a restaurant. He doesn't want to start shit. He owes somebody something. You don't know that. He's turned his life around. What I know is he has a problem, and he's looking to get money from you. And you're not going to get it from me. Then I'll get it somewhere else. And what's that supposed to mean? I got a job offer from Charles Forsman. Look at me. I don't care what he's offering you. Don't take it. Because he's got a bad reputation? You think I don't know that? I think there are a lot of things you think you know that you don't. What I know is you're either going to help me or Charles Forsman is. It's up to you. Harvey, I can't make you listen to me. But what I'm not going to do is let you come here and leverage me with some bullshit offer from a shady banker. So do what you're going to do. Don't say I didn't warn you. What are you doing here? Nobody finds out where I live. I do. Uh, hold on a second, let me turn this off. You gotta be kidding me, you're watching Wall Street? A monthly ritual to remind myself. Of what? Of what a pussy Gordon Gecko is. Now, wanna tell me what changed your mind? I decided I wanted the money. And you turned me down, so. Now you're gonna tell me why you want the money. My brother needs 150,000 for a restaurant. Now we're getting somewhere. <clears throat> Let's have it. Okay, you want it? Here it is. It's not just a restaurant, it's a second chance. Marcus has a gambling problem. And I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. And you think this is his way out? I know it is. Hmm. We're not a good fit. Because restaurants fail. And when this one does, you'll leave. So you might as well leave right now. Then how about we bet on it? You gonna gamble on something to get your brother out of a gambling problem? I didn't say I had a problem. I think maybe you do. When you always win, it's not a problem. <laughs> I think I might like you, pal. I can have anyone. Take your pick. It doesn't matter, because you're gonna lose. That's funny. I look at it like I'm gonna win twice. I get to drive a badass car and I get to kick your ass. Cocky, I like that. Guy like you, I'm surprised you can stand working for Cameron Dennis in the first place. What do you mean? He doesn't like cocky. Take, for instance, what's his name, DuPont? What's he up for, tax evasion? Insider trading. Yeah, you know, whatever. The point is, after what you did the other day, why aren't you leading that? Because this is Cameron's case. If I were him, it'd be yours. Harvey, you are his star player. And he's not even putting you in the game. And on top of that, he didn't have the balls to announce whether he's going after DuPont or not. Don't you worry about Cameron Dennis. DuPont's going to get what's coming to him. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. What are you talking about? Well, you're loyal to the guy you work for. I like that. So you just talking shit about him to see if I jump on board? And you didn't. Which is why we don't have to race anymore. You saying I got the job? I'm saying welcome to the team. Well, that's all well and good, Charles, but we're still racing. You sure as hell are. We just have to find something else to bet on. Hang on a sec. Hey. Hey. You didn't come down here just to give me my start date. I came down here to tell you I think you have something special, and I'd love nothing more than to have you on my desk, but I'm leaving the DA's office. Does this have something to do with that Forceman guy buying you a drink the other night? I thought you didn't know who he was. <laughs> well, I looked him up because I thought I was going to be working for you. And I'm telling you, he's shady. Because he's got a bad reputation. Oh, I don't care what his reputation is. You don't know this about me yet, but I know people. Usually better than they know themselves. And the same way I know you are a good person, I can tell you that man is rotten to the core. 
You're just trying to get me to stay so you can work on my desk. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't care whether I work on your desk or not. You're making a mistake if you take a job with that man. Then I guess I'm making a mistake, because I already did. It's nice knowing you, Donna. You goddamn liar. Donna, don't be mad. Yeah, Conchita tells everybody I'm not home. You know what I'm talking about. DuPont Investments dropped through the floor today, and you sold short based on something I told you in confidence. I don't recall you telling me anything at all. You son of a bitch. You made over 100 million on that trade. Yeah, I did. Welcome to the real world, pal. My real world doesn't involve befriending young attorneys to get inside information. Maybe not the right man for me after all. You think I still want to work for you after this? You wanted competition and money. You got the competition. Here's your money. You can shove that million dollars up your ass because I'm not only not taking your job, I'm gonna prosecute you. And you might as well add your name to the indictment since you've already shared in the profits. What are you talking about? Take a look at this check. That's not a million dollars. It's 850,000. But you can guess where the other 150 went. What did you do? You know what I did. Marcus had nothing to do with this. You wouldn't have had you said yes right away, but you didn't. We're giving you the money back. You're gonna break his little heart. He thinks that money came from you. And you snatch cash out of an addicted gambler's hands, take away his dream, only one way that story ends. So you can either pout about it, or you can embrace it and prove to everyone I was right when I said I saw something special in you. Someday the shoe's gonna be on the other foot, Charles. Words spoken by every loser I've ever met. See you around, pal. Black, two sugars, splash of vanilla. How do you know that's how I take my coffee? Same way I know you're not taking that job. You know I'm not taking that job because I came into work today. No, Mr. Spector. I knew you weren't taking that job the second you walked away from me the other night. Told you I know people better than they know themselves. Well, what did you do with Tina? Oh, I had Big Bertha reassign her. To who? Do you really care? Not a bit. Good. Here's the deal. I will take a bullet for you. And I don't mean that literally. But what you do for me is, when I need something, you give it to me. It's not just a one-way street. We also do some actual secretarial work. Take a look at what I did with your calendar there, hotshot. Holy shit. When did you get that done? Hmm. Told you I'm not like every other secretary. I'm Donna. Then let's get to work. But for the record, I don't take vanilla with my coffee. You will after you taste that. Oh my god, this is awesome. When will they learn?